All right, so let's talk about the liver. Uh, so at first glance, this just looks like a big giant sheet of cells. Um, and you know in your liver, if you see hepatic lobules, so that's made of a central vein, like you see over here, and the boundaries of the hepatic lobule are gonna be where the portal triads are. Uh, you usually find them by seeing where the darker areas are with more uh, concentration of blue. So that's where you have a lot more nuclei. And if we zoom in, we can get a better picture of the um, cell types that we expect to see in the liver. And the majority of the cells in the liver are going to be hepatocytes. Okay, so um, this is a picture from the first lecture in the liver overview. And these are all hepatocytes. And they're arranged in hepatic plates or cords. It's both the same thing. Uh, they're usually one or two cells thick. So, for example, um, these are all hepatocytes here. Some of them have two nuclei. So these two hepatocytes have two nuclei. There's a lot of cytoplasm in, in them. And in between the plates or cords, you have the sinusoids. So this is a sinusoid. Here are some hepatocytes and a sinusoid. So they're basically alternating with each other, hepatocyte and sinusoid. You can also notice that uh, the hepatocytes have these nuclei that are very round. Uh, they stain kind of lightly when it comes to basophilia. And sometimes in this heart, this slide, it's hard to see, but you can see the border between two cells, two hepatocytes here. And I think it's really important to remember that these sinusoids, they're capillaries. They're specialized capillaries that you see uh, in the liver. They have endothelial cells that are very leaky, so they, uh, a lot of material can get through into the space of these, just underneath the uh, sub, just underneath the endothelial cell, and in between the endothelial cell and the hepatocytes. We also have stellate cells or cells of Ito that are within the space of Ds, and on inside the sinusoids we also have for cells which are macrophages. So let's look at them on the slide. So the cells of Ito, it wasn't really emphasized in lab and I'm not even sure how you would find them on the microscopic slide, but the uh, Kupfer cells and the endothelial cells, those we can see a little better. So to find them, what you want to do is look inside the sinusoids. It's kind of sitting on the border of the hepatocytes. So something like this, that's round or triangular, that's jutting out into the, the sinusoid, uh, that would probably be a Kupfer cell. And to find an uh, endothelial cell, you want to find something that's long, thin, and flat, and dark within the sinusoid. So uh, maybe this one, or this one over here. Sometimes it's not very clear. I don't think you can really look at all of these and say for 100% certainty whether it's a Kupfer cell or an endothelial cell. But um, there are some that are better examples than others. Like this is probably an endothelial cell. Um, see, it's very flat and it's very dark. Compare that to something like this that's a little more rounder, it's poking out into the lumen a little more. Um, it might be, not be the best example, but... Like if you compare these two right here, I would say this one is probably an endothelial cell nucleus. This one's more likely to be a Kupfer cell. I think if we were shown uh, images of them on exam, they'd be very clear. So I'd say probably Kupfer over here, and endothelial cell over here. So now let's look at the central vein. I always look for something that looks like basically a big hole and um, just filled with red blood cells. So this would be a central vein. Uh, this looks like one, maybe two central veins just in a strange section. Here's another one over here. And for the portal triads, also known as portal tracks, uh, like I said before, you're looking for something that 
uh, it, on low power, if you see a collection of blue where it's a little darker, you see whole, that means there's a whole bunch of nuclei. And the reason why that's a good way to look for uh, the portal triads is because there's all the nuclei are making up the bile ducts, and then this is the, a branch of the portal vein. Here's another bile duct. And then smooth muscle cells around, um, maybe this is the arterial. I'm not really sure, the hepatic arterial. Or actually, this one could be the hepatic arterial as well. So for the bile ducts, uh, these are usually the easier for me to find. Uh, they stain relatively lightly. Uh, the nuclei are very round. And you can see that there are cuboidal cells. Uh, typically, the branch of the uh, portal vein is going to be larger than the, the hepatic arterial. But you would expect, just like any blood vessel, this is one of the endothelial cells. It's uh, very flat. It's a simple squamous epithelium. So while we're talking about the portal triads, I want to review the blood flow through the liver, uh, just because I think it gets a little confusing sometimes, especially with uh, different vessels having multiple names, it seems like. So just to review, this is the normal flow of blood here on the left, right? It goes from the heart to the arterial system, to capillaries, to the venous system, and then back to the heart. So blood, th blood flow through the liver it goes through a portal system, meaning that um, after the venous system, it goes back into another set of capillaries, back into a second set of uh, venous system, and then back into the heart. So it's important to recognize that the blood coming from this hepatic arteriole that's carrying oxygen, um, it's about 25% of the blood that comes into the liver. This is the, I guess, non-portal, uh, regular systemic circulation. But the blood coming from here, this is the portal system. So just to make it more specific, so we are just talking about the branch of the hepatic artery or the hepatic arteriole. So if we were to trace it from the heart, it's going to go to the aorta, celiac trunk, common hepatic artery, uh, proper hepatic artery, and then either the left or right hepatic artery. And that's pretty much where the gross anatomy part ends. If you look at the dissector, it stops about right here. And now we're going to move into the smaller structures. Uh, that's uh, what we see in histology. So uh, this is another picture from that first uh, liver overview lecture. So the proper hepatic artery is going to branch into the left hepatic artery and the right hepatic artery. And you can see these triads um, forming here. And I mean, this schematic only shows a few, but you can imagine there's tons and tons of these triads all over the liver. And I bolded this because this is the thing that's actually in the portal triad. Um, it has different names depending on what source you're looking at. Sometimes it's called uh, hepatic arterial or branch of hepatic artery. Sometimes I've seen it just called hepatic artery. Um, I think hepatic arterial makes the most sense just because it is a very small vessel, so it should be an arterial. And this is the blood that goes into the liver sinusoids through that capillary network that's uh, you know, percolating throughout the hepatic plates or between the hepatic plates uh, before collecting the central vein. And then it's going to go depending on where it is, either the left, middle, or right hepatic vein. So if the, the lobule is on this side, it's going to go into the left hepatic vein before going into the IVC and carried back to the heart, for example. And then if you compare that to the portal system, uh, I'm not going to track the entire pathway, but, you know, let's say it's uh, through the arterial system, it's going to go into the intestinal uh, capillaries. It's going to make its way to the portal vein. The portal vein is made up of the splenic vein plus the uh, superior mesenteric vein. And uh, I think some people, all three of these, the splenic vein, super, superior mesenteric, and inferior mesenteric will combine to make the portal vein. And then uh, this is where the gross anatomy part ends. Um, the dissector ends like right around here, right? And then when you go to the histology of it, this is when you have branches of the portal vein. This is, uh, I bolded to this because this is what's in the portal triad. And in our manual, it uh, differentiates between pre-terminal portal vein and terminal portal vein. So if you look at this diagram again, the dark blue is the portal vein. 
and it's splitting off into lots of these little uh, pre-terminal branches of the portal vein. And this is a picture from our lab manual, and I really like this because it's a, like a 3D depiction of what the liver architecture is supposed to be. So this would be one of the pre-terminal uh, portal veins. So this thing is the triad here. I'm um, saying that this is the pre-terminal branch of the por portal vein because it's the largest structure within the triad. And then these little branches, those are the terminal uh, branches of the portal vein. And I believe they're called terminal just because they'll be the last piece of the venous system before it goes into these sinusoids, right? So these little cubes are representing the hepatocytes and the space between the cubes are the sinusoids. So in terms of what that means for what you see on the slide, most of the time you're not really going to see um, too much of the terminal vessels. You're going to see, so here's a portal triad, right? This is a pre-terminal portal vein. Looks like this is the bile duct. And in terms of the hepatic arterial, uh, it's a little tougher to find maybe this. And it looks like there might be a piece of the terminal vessel here. Most of the time, you're not going to see something like this where you see the preterminal portal vein and the terminal branch of the portal vein here and here. Just because you have to get pretty lucky to get multiple pieces or sometimes even one piece. And the reason for that is if you look at this diagram, let me zoom in a little bit. No matter where you do the section, you're going to get a cross section of this portal, uh, uh, pre terminal portal vein, right? no matter where you cut this, but you might not necessarily get branches of the uh, terminal vessels. So this cut right here, you can see both pieces of the terminal branch of the portal vein because the section is just happens to be catching both like right here. Uh, likewise, in the PowerPoint, you can see this is the pre-terminal branch of the portal vein. There's the terminal branch of the portal vein. We happen to see one piece of the longitudinal cut of the terminal portal vein because the section would be on something like this, like it's cutting right through the long axis of this terminal vessel right here. So on the slide, sometimes you'll see pieces of it running through, and um, it would be on the outside of the lobules, or the, the outer edge of the hepatic lobules. So now let's talk about three different kinds of lobules within the liver. Um, and the way that I remember this is, uh, so the classic hepatic lobule, that's all about um, blood flow. So all these are portal triads that are flowing towards the center. That's where the blood is all going, to the central vein or the central venule. For the portal lobule, that's all about where's the bile flowing. So it's the opposite of the blood, right? So it's the, op the direction is going towards the portal triad instead of towards the central vein. And finally, the hepatic acinus, or it's also called liver acinus or functional acinus. This is all about zones. So if you make a diamond with uh, two central veins and two portal triads. In between the uh, portal triads, that'll be zone one, and then zone two is farther out, and zone three is right by the central vein, and that's just all about uh, which areas have the most oxygenation and the most nutrients. So if we look at our slide again, um, looking for the central veins, this one looks like it happens to have two, and then this dark area around it is where the portal triads are. So if I were to trace one of the classic hepatic lobules, so here's the central vein right here. So that's kind of like a hexagon, right? And that's what it's supposed to be. Compare that to a portal lobule. So let's say we're going to center around this uh, portal triad. 
So the polar lobule is going to look something like this, right? There's two central veins connecting together. You can see sort of a hepatic lobule right here. So the central vein should be right here, even though I can't see it too clearly. And that's all centered around this portal triad here. So all the bile in this area is drained towards the bile um, duct right here. And finally, for the functional acinus or the liver acinus, we want to use these two central veins. This looks like a portal triad. Here's another one. So it would look something like this. So this here would be zone one. Zone three is going to be out towards the central veins, and zone two is just in the middle. So this is the other slide of the pancreas that's uh, available to us. And uh, here you can see that the uh, central veins are very di distinct. And it might also be easier to see the uh, lobules here. So here's a classic hepatic lobule. Um, this would be the triangle of the portal lobule centering around this portal triad. And for a functional acinus, this would be the diamond over here. And if we go on higher power, unlike the other slide, actually these are going to be the patocytes, and these red spaces look like they're probably the sinusoids. And all this blood is flowing towards the central vein. And this is the final slide of the liver, uh, where it's easier to see the bile caniliculi. So it's much easier to see the structures on the left side of the slide uh, because it's kind of too dark on the, over here. And what you want to appreciate on this slide is that uh, within the hepatic cords or plates, there are going to be these uh, uh, canals where bile is going to collect into the bile duct or bile ductule. So in this slide, this little gray box, that's the bile caniliculus, and this pink thing is the patocyte. This is the lumen that the cell is attached to. So technically, this is the only part that's the apical part of the membrane. The rest of it is basolateral. Because remember the definition of an epithelial cell, right? Uh, it's got a face the outside of the body or a face of lumen of some kind. So this is kind of the lumen. So the sinusoid is a lumen as well, but it's not lined by hepatocytes technically, right? It's lined by the endothelial cells and the cupper cells. So this is not the lumen technically of the hepatocytes. This is the little bile caniliculus. It's a really tiny structure. So to find them, well, you can see these lines are borders in between uh, individual hepatocytes. So what you're looking for is like a tiny little circle that's on the border of the hepatocytes. So I'm covering it right now with my cursor. So if you look at the bottom right of the screen, there would be a little black dot. That's where the biocanuliculus is. And if you want to see it right above my cursor, it's right at the fingertips. Uh, let me see if I can find another one. All right, right here. So here's one hepatocyte. Here's another one. This is the border between them. And this tiny black dot, again, if you look at the uh, inset of the bottom right, you'll see this little black circle. That's where the caniliculus is. Uh, here's an even better one over here. Let's circle this around here. And this one right here. So yeah, uh, make sure you go through the manual. Uh, know where the blood is flowing and where the bile is flowing. Uh, know the function of all the cells and everything. And uh, yeah, hope you found this helpful. I'll talk to you next time.